problem 34 asks us for the equation of the tangent line and the normal line. I've got to confess, this is the first book I've taught out of in quite a while that's asked for the equation of the normal line. Remember, the normal line is going to be perpendicular to the tangent line. Now, they give you the actual point here, x and y. On an exam, I'll just give you x. I assume that you can plug in x equal 1 and get y equals 1 out of this. But what we do need to find the equation of the tangent line is the slope. So how are we going to find the slope of the tangent line at this point? The derivative. Thank you, Haley. We want to find the derivative here. So that's going to be another quotient rule type problem. So let's kind of do it just, uh, just out of memory, right? We want overall, we want the square of the denominator and then the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, and the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. That's what we want. That's going to be the derivative of u over v. So square of the denominator, x squared plus 1 squared. And then the denominator, so x squared plus 1, times the derivative of the numerator. What's the derivative of the numerator? And here's here's an important step. Write down that minus. A lot of times people want to put a plus there. It's a, it's a minus. Minus the numerator, which is 2x, times the derivative of the denominator. Derivative of the denominator, 2x. So that's going to be my y prime. Let's see if we can't clean that up a little bit. I'm going to leave x squared plus 1 squared alone in the denominator. But in the numerator, I can clean things up. If I get 2x squared plus 2 minus 4x squared, combining things even more, I'll get 2 minus 2x squared over x squared plus 1 squared. And that is my y prime. What good is y prime going to be for us? What's that going to tell us? This is the slope of the tangent line at any point. You want to find the slope of the tangent line at any point? Just plug in that particular value in for x. Brandon? No, no, no. This is the slope of the tangent line anywhere. If we want the slope of the tangent line at this point, then we plug in just the x value, right? Just the x value in here. So m tan, we'll do this. At x equal 1, it's going to be 2 minus 2 times 1 squared over 1 squared plus 1 squared again. And guess what? I don't even need to evaluate the denominator because the numerator is 0. So 0 over whatever, it's not going to be 0, um, is 0. And that's the slope of the tangent line. 0. That makes for an easy equation for the tangent line. My equation for the tangent line is going to be y minus 1 equals 0 times x minus 1. That whole thing disappears, so we get y equals 1 is the equation of the tangent line. Yeah, so it's just a horizontal line, right? Very good. We'll look back at that in a second. I want to give people a chance to catch up with their writing. So, so we just took the slope of the tangent line and plugged it into our regular point slope equation for a line, and we got y equals 1. Let's check it on our graphing calculators. Let's just do it a little bit differently, even though this one is on Desmos already. So I'll plug in 2x divided by parentheses x squared plus 1. And I want to see I want to see that graph around this point, which is one and one. So I'm going to choose my window between zero and two. 
That way it centers the graph where I want to see its tangent line. And then I'll hit zoom zero. That'll fit things nice and neatly in there. Oh, okay. Actually, this is kind of the downfall of zoom zero. Can you see it? Um, it's right, our point of tangency is going to be right at the top there. So if I plug in our equation of our tangent line, y equals 1, it barely fits in there, but it's in there. Good enough. So that's the equation of the tangent line. And if you remember back to the original problem, here's your tangent line. We also wanted the equation of the normal line, and the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. So somebody mentioned it. Does anyone else remember what would be perpendicular to the line y equals 1? Yeah, it's going to be, it has to be a vertical line. And vertical lines have an undefined slope, but the equation is just going to be x equal 1. And you can see that they're nice and perpendicular to each other. So we've got our tan line, and x equals 1 is our normal line. Hola. Oh, because we wanted to find the tangent line right here at this point, at the point 1, 1, and that means x equals 1 at that point. And so I took that x equal 1 and I plugged it into this formula because that measures the slope of the tangent line anywhere, including x equal 1. So when I put in a 1 here, I found that the slope of the tangent line was 0. Let's look back at the graph and see that that makes sense. So let me get rid of this line right here. But at that point, 1, 1, certainly it looks like there would be a horizontal tangent line. There's a line with a slope of 0. So at least it makes sense in that regard. Okay. Did you have a, a follow-up question to that? Something still kind of troubling you about that? Brandon, you you okay with that one? Yeah. Okay. Hola. You good? All right. Uh, let's try another one like that one. Uh, actually, maybe a couple more. Um, maybe even one more. Your choice, um, problem 38 or 32. 32 it is. Good job. All right. Thank you. So let's cut back over to here. Problem 32. we got y equals 1 plus x over 1 plus e to the x. We want to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 0. Now notice I'm not giving you the y coordinate. The book does, but I'm not going to. Well, I guess one thing we could do is first of all figure out what the y coordinate is. So if I plug in an x equals 0, what would I get for y? I'd be 1 over what? 1 over 2. So it's, it's something I really hope that you can find. Now I want the equation of the tangent line, so I need to find the slope of the tangent line, and that's going to be the derivative evaluated at x equals 0. So what's the derivative? Well, dy by dx. Do you want me to do like what I've done before, and that is do the U and the V and plug in everything, or do you want to just work it from here? It's up to you. All right, let me remind you of U over V prime. Square the denominator. Start here, because you're going to use the denominator twice before you use the numerator. So it's the denominator squared, and then the denominator times the derivative of the numerator and then the other way around, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. It's only at that last part 
you're finally getting around to differentiating the denominator. So the denominator squared, the denominator again, times the derivative of the numerator. What's the derivative of the numerator? 1. Minus the numerator, which is 1 plus x, times the derivative of the denominator. E of x, good. Because the derivative of the denominator is just going to be, you know, that's a 0 plus e to the x. We can and should clean this up a little bit. So if I distribute everything, distribute the 1 here, 1 plus e to the x minus e to the x minus x e to the x. So I'm distributing the negative and the e to the x over 1. Yes. One plus x, you, it, that'd be, it'd be one. So derivative of the numerator is one. It's it's all right. It's all right. Those terms cancel each other out. So overall, we're left with one minus x e to the x over one plus e to the x squared. And I'm not going to try and bother to fancy that up. In fact, I don't think we can make that look a little prettier. But what I do need is I need to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 0. So this is my dy by dx. How am I going to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 0? This is the part where you make me look good. Come on. Everyone else, you plug in 0. Yay, cool. We plug in 0 to the derivative. So at 0... At 0, that's going to be 1 minus 0 times e to the 0, basically 1 minus 0, over 1 plus e to the 0 squared. So what's the slope of the tangent line then going to be? 1 fourth. Yay. So I think I've got everything I need now. I've got uh, the slope of the tangent line. And I got the points of tangency, or the point of tangency. Coordinates of the point of tangency are 0 and 1 half. So these three pieces of information can get plugged into our point slope form of a line. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus 1 half equals 1 quarter times x minus 0. When I distribute and move the half to the side, I get 1 quarter x minus 0 plus a half. So that's the equation of our tangent line. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. Yeah, you're right. Wait, come on. That was easy. There we go. Cool. All right. Anything on this you want me to recap or you just want to put that one in a distant spot in your memory and forget it forever? Either way. With all these things, you need to start up by finding the derivative because that gives you the slope of the tangent line. You'll also need to plug in the value of x to get the value of y to find that point of tangency. And last but not least, I hope you have this thing memorized absolutely need that one memorized. Um, now, a good thing to do on a test is formulas that you think you might forget. As soon as you get the test, write it down. Write it right on the test. It doesn't hurt at all. Um, in fact, it's a good idea. It's called a memory dump. Before you forget those things, write them down.
what I'm what I'm saying, and not so few words, is that this will not be provided on your exam. <laughs> you have to know these things. You know, and I I kind of go back and forth on that a little bit. Part of me is like, you know, why not just give them to them? But the other part is that, you know, it, it really slow you down if you had to look up all this stuff on every problem. You really would. Eventually, you just want to know this stuff cold. And it's not just a Jeff parent policy. It's a department-wide, college-wide policy. So um, I got to toe the line on that one. Do we want one more? No. Hope. Uh, no, you can do that. that. That'll work as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole avalanche of response. One, uh, one more here. So let me give you some homework. Um, for homework, problem three through twenty-three and twenty-seven through thirty-three. And jump all the way up to problem 51. That's 3.2. And the one problem that I didn't get to get to, but um, we did stuff like it, uh, was problem number two. And I think by now I don't need to necessarily convince you. Problem number two looks like this. Um, f of x is x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus the square root of x divided by x cubed. As it stands, how would you have to differentiate this? If you were just going to work with it right as it is, what would you have to do? You have to use a quotient rule. I don't think I need to convince you at this point that using the quotient rule would be a real pain. I would divide each of these by that x cubed, subtract the exponents. So 4 minus 3 gives me x to the first power, minus 5. And this is x to the 1 half power, so I'd have plus x to the negative 5 halves. And I differentiate it there just using your power rules, right? Much, much easier. So when you can, try and avoid the quotient rule. All right, good luck with that.